Welcome, everybody. I'm glad to see Hyde Park to the brave community. We'll, uh, and now if we all end up with it, we'll just, well, there you go. Government does it again. <laughs> um, do we have any changes in the agenda? We'll look at it. Okay. And anybody in the public want to comment now or if you're here for something specific? And we can jump around it so that people can stay as short a time as possible. I, I don't know if I'm in the right place. I'm here about a sewer issue. Um, sewer issue at my house. This would be the right place. This would be the right place. So the right place? Okay. I, I, just, I'll, I don't know. I said it's 6 o'clock to be here. Yeah, so That's okay. number four. That's number four. I got you. Okay. That's number four. Okay. Um, this is our uh, this is our first okay. meeting since town meeting, so it's our organization meeting. We have uh, Rogers on the phone. You there, Roger? Okay, you can hear us. Okay. Okay. And uh, welcome to our new board member. Thank you. Or um, is it you? I think you'll you find this is a terrific group of people to work with. Um. We need to uh, we need to elect a chair and a vice chair, and then figure out and we'll chat about who's liaison liaison with with whom and how we want to how we want to do those sorts of things. Um, who'd like to be chair? Who can you? Susan. <laughs> who gets left in the room? <laughs> I'm not I nominate Susan. Susan. Second. Second. Okay. Um, any other nominations? I guess all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 You sure you don't want to do it, Roger? No. <laughs> well, well, I couldn't hear that. What's your saying aye to? Uh, okay. Uh, electing me as chair. <laughs> what? Who? Me, Susan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I guess I'm chair. Who's gonna? Who will be vice chair? Roger Barry, I nominate. <laughs> Second. Oh, okay. That'll teach you not to be here, Roger. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all, all, all Thanks, Rowley. <laughs> Thanks, Rowley. All, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Your, your vote doesn't count, Roger. Okay. Um, liaisons. Uh, and, and I think, Mayor, just to, to reinforce for folks what the, what the job of a liaison is, and it's really, you're not a, um, you, your job isn't to manage whoever you're liaisoning with, it just really is to kind of check in with them, and you'll be the person that they, when they know that they check in with, if they have questions or they need to, they need to do something. And if they need anything, they can get a hold of their liaison. That's right, they can get a hold of their liaison. Um, I'm thinking we have a uh, we have a wealth of transportation expertise on this board right now, which is wonderful. We also have a wealth of projects that need to be done, and and thinking, you know, maybe as as uh, because Brian, you were the you were on the you were road stuff in Elmore, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Commissioner, yeah. Right. Um, and of course, Roly, we know we have you, and we've got Roger, who has his experience. I don't know who who best to be is the um, Roger. You have you have uh, you've been the main liaison. I'm thinking of you know when we get down to these other issues that it might we might figure out how to have different people with your variety of expertise sort of be the liaison for a specific project. You know, yeah. I, you know that that. Because again, just looking at the well, there's the town garage repair. There's the whole thing with the with Centerville and the culverts and, and all that sort of stuff. So somebody, somebody. I would. Yeah. 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 I would recommend that um, um, Brian be the new um, liaison for highway. I do. Okay, with you, Roy. It's fine with me. Okay. 
But that'll teach me I don't like to do the sweat <laughs> board. <laughs> oh, okay, all right, if, if that works for them, again, I think when we get to specific projects, sort of having, sort of splitting it up because there's a, uh, there's a lot, there's a lot of stuff going on and, and asking, um, asking one select board person to be in charge of that might get to, we just, we just sort of play with it, and, you know. When Mark says he's going to quit if we don't sort it out, we'll know that we have to do a better job of it. I think Mark and I have a good rapport yep. and I think with the whole crew. I think yeah, yeah. Well, I think we're, we are um, very fortunate in having a good relationship with that. Uh, terrific. They're small, but they, are, they really are a terrific group of folks. Agreed. Um, Rowley, who do you want to liaison to? What would you like okay. to do? Fire department. Go back to them. Okay. We works for me. Roger Audet. Do you keep doing being the sheriff? Yeah. Yeah, and uh the new sheriff in that one. Yeah. Yeah. I got the background of that and, and again I think there may be um I haven't talked with the with the other chairs since town meeting day, but if they want to get that, you know, that group going, then we'll work, work around, you know, your schedule so that you can be part of that. There's a, again, the last meeting forming a, a group of the three towns to work to, forming a committee to work, to oh, work with yeah. the sheriff to come up with a sustainability plan for what we want that to look like in the, in the future. Roger has committed to a 3% increase for three years um, to, to give everybody time, but we can't spend three years doing nothing because it's just, you know, we, we got to figure out what we're going to, what we're going to do. So, will that still be the fast squad that I'll be liaison for or just the fire department? Uh, fast has been mixed with ambulance, we'll be, I think. Right? Or with fire? Yeah. Could, but not with fire, but I was liaison for yeah. fire and fast, right. you're saying? Yeah. So, John Savage, you know that I'll be your liaison officer for another year anyway. No problem. Let you know that now. Yep. So, <laughs> yep. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm sure we'll see you. Okay. Um, Roger Berry. Well, I would like to take and work with uh, Ron and yourself. Um, I would like to help Brian in any way possible, but do these little side projects that need to be done where we don't need uh, you know, three, four of us from the board because as far as I know, everyone's working. Right, uh, right. So I would like to do the little side projects and then whatever else where I needed, that, that would work out perfect. Library and record. Right, that's a... Uh, and small projects. Right, and small projects, that's right. Okay. And then you would do, Susan as the chair typically would do administration and elected officers, legal, and cemeteries kind of hanging out there. I don't know if anybody wants to pick that, but we do have some structural things we're hoping to work on with cemetery this I year. I can do the cemetery. I have good experience. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> we'll, keep, we'll keep Brian busy. Yep. <laughs> He's in. You're down. Okay. I take care of all we need to do for. Uh, we need to confirm that the newspapers, news, and citizen for legal announcements and your meetings are at six o'clock on the third Mondays. And adopt your rules of procedure, which haven't been adopted for a while, but 2012. So it could, that could be a project at some point. <laughs> That's right. But Those are the three things. So the right. newspaper, the meeting time, and the uh, rules of procedure. Which you all have a copy of. Okay. Um, does this meeting time still work for everybody? It does for me. It works? Yep. Okay. That's it. Okay. I'll vote to approve all three. Of okay. So I guess I need a motion to. Does it work for Roger Berry? Yeah, Roger. Nine yeah. nine o'clock works better for Roger Berry, but I'm not sure about others. Well, yeah, I don't think for working that works. Right. Okay. Right. We'll do the. We'll we'll stick with the six on the third Mondays. Yeah. Okay. So second. I second that motion if it hasn't been. Okay. Um, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Aye. Okay. 
Now we need the newspapers and the, we get all three of them. I think you're doing all three. Yeah, okay. That's what I wrote down. Maybe. Uh, you, Brian agrees. <laughs> there we go. Okay, three. Update on the oh, pandemic planning and emergency plans. And <clears throat> I can give a quick overview. The, as everybody knows, state and federal guidance has come out that all the towns are reacting to. Uh, we've been collecting information. Kim has been looking at information. The village has been looking at all the information. So now a lot of towns are starting to take action items into their hands. So uh, Kim's going to go over what she's deciding first. She handed out a memo uh, detailing her plan. The select board at some point, maybe tonight, would decide on a couple other things. Uh, there's lots of phone calling and restructuring, I think, that we can kind of do in response that will limit contact with the public. And I, I think that's pretty much the essence of what we've been asked to do in the short term. Whether or not you all want to meet again at some interval because it's April 20th is your next meeting. So whether you want to set another date tonight to do a check-in on COVID, no. uh, maybe that's something you want to do. But other than that, you don't have any meetings until April 20th, which seems far away considering how fast things are moving. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think we have another yeah, yeah, so, two weeks then, yeah, halfway point. Yeah, we can we can look at calendars later. But yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about a date. So Kim, you want to go over with the board what you're thinking? So um, immediately starting tomorrow, um, our office is going to be closed to the public. Um, we will all be, we all, me and um, Kristen will be in the office, we'll be working. Um, we, I'm going to put out on Front Porch Forum, I'm going to put notices on the doors, on the post office bulletin boards, I'm going to email the newspaper, I'm going to email the radio station. Um, I'm going to put it on my personal Facebook page because the town doesn't have one um, just to get the word out right. so that people are aware that we can do things like licensed dogs by, the, by mail. They can put the check in the night drop. Um, taxes can be you know, paid, put it in the night drop, um, mail it in. That's We don't have an installment due until May 15th. We're, you know, we can still do marriage licenses. Um, we're going to do those by appointments. Um, we handle a lot of attorneys come into the office doing a lot of research for you know purchases and refinance and whatever. Um, so we're going to handle those <clears throat> by appointments. If they need to have a lot of research done, if it's something where they know <clears throat> they just need a tax bill or they need a copy of a lister card or they need they know the book and the page that they want, they just need it faxed over. Um, we'll fax all that over and we're still gonna charge them the regular fees. They won't be charged any research or, or vault time fee because yeah. they're not present. Um, so we'll be able to get information to people who need it. Um, we're just trying to lessen the traffic flow in the office. There are three people in the building who have underlying health conditions that could be compromised if they were to get the virus. Um, so that's our plan. My plan is to follow the governor's guidelines or dates for schools. Um, but of course, if things start to clear up sooner, then obviously we would address that sooner. Um, but the plan is to look at it again around April 6th and see, you know, what, what do we need to do for another week or, you know, whatever. Um, we, I have a, a list that I created years ago of attorneys and title researchers and appraisers, people who signed up for email distribution lists that I send out notices when we close the office early, when we close for holidays, and they've been notified that you know this is a possibility. Um, so if we go that route, which we are, I'm going to be sending another email to them tonight, letting them know that effective immediately we're closed, but we're here to help them uh, with whatever. Can I? Can you? I'm just trying to repeat some of that. So yeah. I'm check. Anybody, excuse me, anybody on the phone that needs some of that repeated or the essence of it from Kim Bolton? I've never, heard, I've never heard a word of it. Okay, so <laughs> I'll do that for you guys. Uh, Kim said that she's posting a notice on various formats for closing the town clerk's office effective tomorrow morning. 
uh, appointments will be scheduled and she's encouraging most people to avoid the office and communicate by telephone or email to try to get service the regular business done so that will be through this uh, April 6 school closure deadline for now and revisited closer to April 6 how about the um all attorneys that want to come in and do some uh, tax work and uh, those people especially on a closing they need to get in there and get the information done how's that going to work yes on, on specific requests where they can provide a good amount of the information kim will get that information to them via email or fax or maybe it's just a quick phone call we don't know if they're more complicated searches then that will be where kim will set up an appointment okay Kim, do you know, is the village doing the same thing? They are following the suit. Okay. Um, the one thing I do want to bring to your attention is um, March is our really busy month for dog licensing. Um, so a lot of clerks have been in touch with the Secretary of State as well as VLCT, and VLCT has indicated that the statutory deadline of licensing the dogs before April 1st cannot statutorily be changed by anybody but the legislature. So the only thing that the select board has controls over are the late fees. So I'm asking the board to waive the late fees um, through a date, pick a date, April 15th, May 1st. And, and when I say May 1st, um, there were at least two dozen clerks who were emailing back and forth and their boards and councils were waiving through May 1st. Okay. Um, okay. So it's just, that's, yeah, what? I know what other towns are doing. It might be right. <clears throat> See if we can get it being consistent for folks anyway. Sure. Um, the other thing that I'm asking is um, fax fees are not my clerk fee. I don't set those fees. Those are board fees that we enforce when people want something faxed to them. Um, because of this situation and we're asking people to avoid coming in, right. Um, I'm asking the board to allow me to waive fax fees right now, maybe through May 1st, and address that again yep. no, later. Nope, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? Nope, sounds like a good plan. Uh, Ro <clears throat> Roger, did you hear that response from Kim about other issues? No, I didn't. No. Uh, Kim's recommending that the uh, late fee for dog licensing be waived uh, from April 1st to May 1st, and fax fees in the town office be waived while she's trying to help attorneys and searchers do their work. Okay. So that's a, we'll have to set some dates on that later through a motion, but I think that's, yeah. those are the two requests that she had. Okay, sounds good, Kim. We'll definitely take care of that for you. <clears throat> um, okay. Just go to emergency plans. Yeah, the, <clears throat> in our state conference call, the state emergency management director advised that the town EMDs, emergency management directors, would be the primary link between the state emergency operations center, which was opened on Wednesday morning, and the local towns. So Brad Carrier's here. Uh, I don't know if you have anything to say, Brad, but uh, basically the towns are being asked to follow the protocol we've always talked about and what kind of the steps that Kim was talking about. And we don't know of any others at this time that would take any action by the such as op opening up the local emergency operations center that hasn't been asked yet. Some individual towns are doing that if they have more complicated issues. Uh, think of a public, large public gathering or a transit center, those kind of things. But we don't have those, so I don't know. Brad, do you have anything? No, I'm just uh, going by what the state recommends and uh, just hoping for the best. So, uh, Roger in particular, but anybody else online, Brad Carrier just said he's following state guidance and hoping for the best. Uh, we also have town health officer, Keith Ulrich here, who's somewhat in the same boat. Uh, 
there's certain roles in, within the town structure that respond to emergencies. And the EMD, which is Brad, and the town health officer, Keith, are the two point people along with the select board generally. Uh, I don't know if Keith has anything to say tonight other than just kind of watching what's happening right now. Yeah, I, I'm, this is Keith Ulrich. Um, I haven't heard any any guidance uh, from from the state uh, other than what has already been said by Brad. Um, apparently, the uh, town health officers are tasked in some respect to work with emergency management uh, uh, on, uh, I guess, procedures uh, to be determined. So nothing. It's it's all uh, it's all new territory. Yeah. Well, I'm not, you know, I'm not quite sure in communities like, like Hyde Park and this kind of health emergency, um, what it is that we can do. There are, um, some towns are setting up again as it becomes more widespread and if you get folks that are um, self-quarantining, you know, to, um, um, to make sure that somebody's checking on them. It's, you know, some pragmatic things. If you're not supposed to go out into your house and you need, everybody needs ex errands runs and you need some food picked up or you need medication <clears throat> picked up or you just, um, I know Amy in the library, they're working on how folks can get books out of the library since the library has closed for an indefinite time period. Um, so, I, so I think all of it is just, um, We've all just got to stay in touch with each other, and people have ideas or they see needs developing, and, and, and you know, the, we'll just step up to the plate, and everybody we're gonna we're gonna figure it out as we go here. I have a question: Does anybody check a copy of the hospital if they're if they're all set up for this thing? Yes, they are. You they, know, with yes, the they are breathing set. thing and all that. Yeah, and they're set up at the uh, where you take the ambulances. Mm -hmm. and in right there they are and they're all they have the rooms and stuff available no, they don't they don't want them inside the way i understand no. um, they have well, one negative pressure room at the hospital here in marshall uh, if we had a case where one of the ambulance services brought them in but people are being told that you just do not show up to the hospital or call 911 call your primary care well i understand all that but i right. understand if a guy has it and he needs to be isolated. Um, he needs to go to intensive care. Have they got the room to handle more than one person? Not in Copley. Okay, that's what I yeah. was one. That's what yeah. I wanted to know. And then if you drive yourself this week, from one to four o'clock, they're doing drive-through testing where they're going to send people out, and actually, and the patient's going to stay right in the car, and they're going to do the things, and then if they have to go in and be admitted then they'll make the decisions on how they're going to get them in the hospital and that or, or vice versa. Um, UVM Health Net is going to be transporting all patients from Copley if they do come in and they're positive down to UVM. Okay, that's what I, yep. that's what I wanted to know. Yep. What would happen? So are those people that have already been talked to a doctor, or not anybody at this point, just people that already have a doctor's order to be tested would go to Copley? That is correct. Their their physician, your primary care physician, would contact Copley and let them know they're they, coming. They're coming in, and there'd be staff there that would come out and greet them at the entrance, and then do whatever they have right. are doing. Um, for the people on the phone, did anybody hear Brad's response to the situation at Copley Hospital? Yeah, I now hear. Uh, You're all set. Okay. Well, somebody didn't hear. Oh. Right. Hey. Joe, the CEO, Joe, is going to be on WLVD tomorrow morning. Okay. So Copley will be on the, on the radio tomorrow morning telling folks what to, what's happening and what's going on. Okay. Okay, thank you. Was that, was that Dan? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Excuse me, what, what time is that testing going to start, Brian? They're doing it from 1 to 4, Monday through Friday. And uh, Dan Noyes just said there's a <clears throat> press release tomorrow morning from Copley. Okay. 
going out. So that, all those details will be. Also on the community health services of Lamoille Valley, we're set up to handle three, but we don't really have the room to handle any more than that. And for going in and getting shots, if, if the requirements are falling in place of the sickness that um, that they come in with, people feel doctors or the nurses feel that they need to be tested. We have three available rooms. Okay. Thank you, Roger. And the phone's been ringing off the hook up here today. They just can't even keep up. All right. Well, people are. Um, this is a scary time, you know, because you don't, uh, you don't, you don't know what's, you don't know what's happening. <clears throat> um, okay, do we have anything else with with health? Well, I, uh, this is Keith yeah. Ulrich. I, I, I guess I, I have a question here. We do have uh, Paul Nesky present. He's with. Uh, the uh, Sterling folks, um, and they're trying to figure out how they're going to address it. Um, for for our older citizens who might not live uh, in his community, uh, who might be isolated, I just wonder if uh, maybe there should be, or what we could do to get the word out for folks that do, or that find themselves isolating and uh, lacking resources for uh, necessary grocery delivery and other things. Yeah, um, just some, some. Is there a lot of people that are coming back from Florida, Arizona, anywhere yeah. from yeah. down there? Yeah. I mean, I'm Paul Nesky. <coughs> um, what we've done so far is uh, Friday we locked down the building. So no new activities can take place. All Good. the old activities that were taking place were shut down. The, um, the only thing we're gonna, we scheduled ourselves for are a meeting, government <laughs> meetings that, to, that we need to tend to the, these issues. Tomorrow we've got a meeting and then the proposal I'm gonna to present to them is to have a committee. It's, uh, I'm gonna call it for the sake of a, a name of a health and wellness committee. It's going to do exactly what you're, what you're asking for to understand who is coming back. Right. We have, we have a pretty good idea of who's gone, obviously. I've talked to some that are, are coming, returning, and how they're going to return, and, and what protocols we're going to take for them before they arrive here and those after. You know, if they're coming from out of the country, we have one that's going to do that. She'll be asked to quarantine herself. Um, she'll go through the usual procedures that you hear about in the airports now, so she will, she'll know at that time if she's infected or not. But then there's that time span from there to here. Uh, so we're still going to request that, that there's a quarantine currently. That's what we're doing. The other is uh, to identify those people that most we know, but those that are, uh, that are impacted one way or another by, by an illness, disease or failure uh, and they're not able to get out shopping they're not able to take care of themselves as well as they would have otherwise some people as uh, children of the elderly uh, that live there have done that already they basically quarantine their parent and and assign there nobody's to enter that kind of thing so we're going to identify uh, the people we've uh, uh, kind of handpicked to do that uh, <coughs> people that have been in the health care business so the lpns rns uh, some lab technicians, uh, um, x-ray technician, a nursing home nurse uh, for retired. So these are the kind of people that we're, I'm asking to be on that committee. Sure. Yeah. Identify, make a list, see to it that they have somebody that's going to care for them. Uh, kind of uh, not just a mentor, but a person responsible for them, feel the responsibility to care for them. That lives right there in the park, so you don't have to have to, you know. So far, the... the uh, Home Health is on board with us. Mm -hmm. They're still coming. Visiting Nurse Association, they're still coming. That kind of thing. Hospice. Um, and, uh, so we just want to be working in relationship to what they're doing as well and identify those people that are getting serviced by hospice right now or home health. But they still shouldn't be out in the public at yeah. nine years yeah. old doing their shopping or whatever their needs are. And, 
picking up their prescription, that kind of thing. So we'll have somebody do that. So that's where we're at so far. Um, and we haven't set a date where all this will end. You know, when we'll open up the building again. So it's all open, open ended. So we're not sure. Today, I hear it could be seven or eight weeks you know, as, a, as a, the new date, just like the date of people congregating. Started out at 1,000, went to 250, today it's 50. No, it's then I heard it's 10. 10. Yeah. Yeah. 10 before I left. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's. Well, the more we learn about it, you know, it's right. more. So I appreciate the opportunity to be a part of a, a wellness system that we're trying to employ here and, and learn from each other. Thank you. Paul, you do have uh, volunteers that will go out and get stuff for those people that shouldn't be out in the community. Exactly. Great. Um, I did see on the front page forum that uh, there is people on there that are uh, also volunteering on there too. Yep. To do that. So if we know of anybody that needs uh, any supplies like that, there there are people out there that want to do it. Well, well plus I know the, the supermarkets, I've heard you know, from both of them there, if you want to call in an order, mm -hmm. they'll fill it for you and they'll bring it out to your car. Perfect. So, so our local supermarkets are doing that sort of thing. And I expect you could call Kenny or any of the drugstores. And no, they, they don't have anything in the supermarket. Yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, it's filling sure. right back up. <laughs> yeah, very fast. You don't go in their store, just mm -hmm. like here. Yeah. They prefer you don't come in the office. Right. So, uh, to, res to respond to what Keith was talking about, which is what sort of a general question for people in need, which is what Paul was also just talking about at the mobile home park. Dan Noyes sent an email about Meals on Wheels, which is modifying its delivery services down to five, uh, two days a week. But they're also looking for people to get in touch with them for assistance to do the service calls and things that... Uh, some people might need either they're low on groceries or they can't get out of the house and those kind of things. So, I believe the state nine one uh, sorry two one one system is also an avenue for people in need. So, if you do have your isolation going on and you can't get out for some reason, two one one is ramping up to provide some services along with the Meals on Wheels group uh, more. So, uh, people are aware. People are checking, and. The more if you can help out to get in touch with some of those agencies, I'm sure they could find a find a spot for you. Yeah. If Dan, you go on the, the website for the health department, um, all of the information is right there. Is this Carol? Uh, no, that's Rich. No, Rich. this is Rich Westman. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the, the, if you go on that um, website for the health department, it's all listed right there. Okay. okay. I am here though, Ron. Oh, I saw your name <laughs> pop up. That's what I was asking. <laughs> okay. Anything else on this topic? Okay. So the, the last thing on this is emergency planning and continuity of government. Those two topics will be on Wednesday's meeting with our emergency managers at noon. Um, those are existing documents that need to be updated. Um, and we're going to try to do that. It'll be information that's shared. It's also the time of the year when we update our local emergency management plan, which I handed out earlier today to the select board. So if you can look at that, that deals with who's in various <coughs> town positions, what their roles are, phone numbers, those kind of things. And then the, the more detailed, you know, what if scenarios are what we're going to start talking about on, on Wednesday at noon for anybody that wants to come down or we can do a phone in for people that uh, don't want to be in a <coughs> group if we get over 10. <laughs> Wednesday at noon? Wednesday yeah. at noon, yes. Down here? Yes. Okay. All right. We're good. Um, local Board of Health, notice on- Susan, what? I got Sorry. something to say. I yep. just want to pull myself out of this because it is my neighbor and I know him very well. Gotcha. So okay. I want to be, yep. you want me to leave? I don't. No. You don't have to leave. Okay. I just okay. want to you just, Right. No, you're right, okay. Um, 
Roger Berry, the next thing we're dealing with is, is a, uh, a notice of intent to seek a health order on Fitch Hill. And this is, uh, this is Rowley's neighbor, so Rowley's removed himself from the conversation. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. what? <clears throat> so the town health officer issued a notice of intent to seek a health order, which would have, would have required the property owner to take certain measures. And those notices of intent need to be talked about and debated, issued or not issued by the local board of health, which is the select board. Okay. So Keith Ulrich, Ulrich has worked on this for almost uh, probably a month and a half anyway. And since he was the one issuing the notice, I think he should provide an update at this point. And I know the landowner is here as well. So, okay. so what, what happened after you issued the notice? I guess. Well, maybe, maybe even before you got to the notice, can you, I know nothing. Oh, okay. <laughs> history. You know. I, but yeah, we need a little so history. A, here. Yeah, right. Sorry. Right. It was a, uh, Wastewater system that was overflowing onto the neighbor's property. That's it. So part of that enforcement is either a notice of intent, or if it was severe and headed into somebody's shallow well, then it could be an emergency one, which would go right to the board. This one is a two-step where health officer issues the intent, gives a chance for the landowner to respond, and then you have this meeting. Okay, so it's a two-step. Is wastewater a polite way of saying sewage? Yes, technically it's wastewater, but it's sewage from an in-ground system that was flowing down there. Okay. So health officer inspected, decided something had to be done, put okay. the landowner on notice, and you know from there. Uh, initially, and I don't have that uh, the actual dates with me, but uh, this is Keith Ulrich. And initially, um, when I went and inspected the uh, property or the adjacent property where the uh, uh, wastewater was flowing, um, it was very clear uh, it appeared to be a failed system with uh, visible uh, wastewater running down the hill onto the uh, adjoining property. Uh, there was also quite a bit of smell and you know, it was very apparent okay. what we were looking at. Um, with the notice, uh, the notice that was sent to the landowner, uh, it gave them an opportunity to uh, make a correction. And uh, so in it, the notice warned them that uh, absent some corrective action, that it was our intent to issue, to, to uh, seek an order. So uh, upon, upon that notice, um, a uh, corrective action was done by the uh, property owner and um, it appears that the situation the problem has been mitigated uh, obviously we'll keep an eye on it and the the adjoining property owner has been notified uh, but for now it appears the issue is resolved so we are i'm not uh, seeking the uh, issuance of that order at this time okay but in this kind of situation, that just, um, you're sort of at this level and it remains at that level so that if something begins to happen again, if there's more wastewater, like you do you go back to square one or do you just get, how does it work from there? Uh, probably, <clears throat> probably the way to do it is because the health order could be issued today, the board should take some action to either decide not to issue it and add, maybe advise Keith to watch it for the next couple months. Okay. Or issue it modified, because you can modify his original language to say, uh, we're, we're not going to issue the health order that Keith proposed, but because we knew there was a problem, the order that we're going to issue is, we're going to inspect it through June 1st, assuming that this situation stays resolved, then we'll discontinue it. It's kind of like a formal way to get carried forward. Right, okay. Whether it's necessary or not, I don't know. I, I, if, if the na downhill neighbor and Keith are all set with it because it's resolved, we can always issue another one, start from the beginning. But one way to keep it open would be to actually issue the health order with a different set of conditions than what Keith proposed because it is substantially resolved. 
Okay. So it's kind of a two answer there. <clears throat> Looking at these things, um, the state of Vermont's been notified. <coughs> they know about the location, the situation. They are not going to go through enforcement because Keith has said no. we've resolved no. it for the time being. On Keith's part, he always has the option to issue another notice of intent and come back to the board just like he did this time okay. if it recurs. So maybe the landowner can talk to right. it. So, well, when, when we bought the property 20 some odd years ago, we were informed that an addition to the system was made by Menage. I went to Menage to try and find out about the system because there was a minor issue at that time. And they gave me all sorts of runaround and well, we don't have any records of it. We know we did it, but we don't have any records of it. And so that's where I was left. And I've tried, <coughs> I've, I've had the, uh, the tank pump once already, uh, about 10 years ago, I guess it was. And I guess I'll probably have to do it again this summer, just for precaution. And uh, I, I have an idea where the problem is, and once it thaws out and I can work with the ground, I will attempt to uh, further uh, remove that issue. I, do you, um, living in the country and having a septic system, um, we can't, and our advice has always been that you pump a tank every five years. Is there are there sort of general guidelines for how often you should have something cleaned, pumped, whatever? I I don't know that. Um, I know I would I do it for my my own sooner than that, but uh, I'm not sure what the guidelines. Yeah, are. three to three to five is pretty standard. I, I would say, we have uh, a big tank in two of us, so. <laughs> Three to five is pretty yeah. standard, but the newer systems are engineered systems generally, so they have a whole different schedule, including annual. So depending on what system you're talking about, you could have a totally engineered system that's almost self-contained pre-treatment and all that other stuff, which is high maintenance, and the state requires you to get a contract with a engineering company to make sure it's working. Or you go back to the older way, which is either like a mouse system or in-ground system, yeah which generally comes with the three to five year. I think in this case, we're talking about a standard system, not not a fancy system, but a more of a standard yeah. system. So three to five would be a... Yeah, well, it was the original system we put in when the house was built. And then I, I don't know how long ago it was, but it was before we, well before we bought the property, Menage came in and expanded the system and modernized part of it, and I don't know, like I said, I have no idea what they did, because they have no idea what they did. But That's always helpful to property owners, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So that could be one of your modified health orders is, you know, for this particular system, because it already has a, a history, we, we don't know what the cause is. I thought I had read something about potentially running water in the house that overflowed the system. Well, I had I have a, had an issue with uh, one of my toilets was not uh, was continually running, and I I'm trying to. It's an old toilet, and I can't find the uh, fixture for the inside. The right. Oh, right. Because it's so old, so I might have to replace up the whole toilet. But I have removed that water situation from that toilet. That toilet no longer flushes or anything. So that has uh, okay. slowed down the, the uh, wastewater uh, leakage I, from the house. I, I, my, I, I think, and this is Keith, I'm not. You know, it's funny how when you end up living in the country and we all learn a lot more about systems than you just said, oh, after all these years. But, but that maybe part of the solution needs to be that you need to make sure that you get it pumped on a regular basis. Yeah. You know, and that 
10 years is just, you know, so it needs to be, and again, that's really the size of the tank and everything else, but it needs to be kept, so it needs to be every three or four years that it well, the that last, needs to be. Last time they pumped it, it was like 99% just clean water. Well, not clean water, but just water. It was very little waste. So the guy says, it's just the two of you living here. Yeah, right. Yeah. You, you got a big enough tank, you should be all right for, for a while. I, I guess my while is up. <laughs> <laughs> you, need to, you need to put a specific... <laughs> we have on the annual things we do, so I know, and actually I'm thinking about it, we do ours every four years, and it's, you know, so we don't have any problems. Okay. Twenty. At least twenty years old. Well, the house was built in 1947. Well, it's repaired. Twenty. But the the new the new addition to the system is at least twenty to twenty five years old. Yeah. So the system's twenty to twenty five years old. Okay. And and Minash made some changes to it, but. Minash doesn't happen to have any records of the changes that he made to it, so nobody's quite sure what happened. <clears throat> okay. I, gives us so those are, those are the two options. I, because the health order is on the table, I would either take a vote with the local board of health to not issue the health order, but advise the town health officer to watch it for a couple months, or issue a health order with some requirement to pump the tank and try to do that continually every four years or whatever you come up with and watch the system through June 1st. And if it reoccurs, Keith would bring it back to you for a health order. <clears throat> I think those are kind of the two. I think the latter of what you just said, that they uh, <clears throat> should have it pumped and then uh, monitor it. Yes, I, I think well, it could to, be to a factor. Out of the, we, uh, that we can get in there, to, you know, the ground is still frozen. So as soon as it's thought out, I'm going to have uh, Hardigans come in and take care of it. Right. But like I said, it's still closing out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what I makes me wonder, sir, is that uh, if the frost in the ground could be affecting the way that the flow would be coming out of your leach field, and then somehow could be to your neighbor. Yeah. And so. Uh, and that's, that's where I'm. That's why. That's why I was doing my. I bought the house. I. I went to Minash and said, can you tell me about this new system? You know, what where is it? Where and you know what what was done and they <coughs> yeah. had no idea. <coughs> so so let's I'll make a motion to go ahead and pump the tank and um, and keep watch of it. With or without the health order. Yeah. With the health order. So you modify the health order. Yeah, we modify the health order. Mm -hmm. So probably the best, <clears throat> excuse me, the best way to do it would be, go ahead, Roger. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll have to draft. How about cleaning up the neighboring property uh, land to where it wasted over onto their property? That's the land. I don't know what's over there. I think, I think that's. Still a lot of stuff on the lawn? No. No, no it's okay. All right, Riker. Okay. Um, so if part of the motion is authorized Susan to sign the health order, because it has to be drafted and revised, then we'll revise it along the lines of what you talked about, and Susan would author, be authorized to sign for the Board of Health, so you don't have to have another meeting right away. Come on. Yeah. Off in favor of doing the modified health order and giving Susan the authority to sign it. We'll, we'll, we'll ship it out to everybody so everybody can check it before we, before we do that. Um, Cindy Five is saying aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. We'll take care of it. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I just, back to the Corvina Corona thing. I work at the Stone Lake Resort. Oh, okay. And not that it has what our problem has anything to do with Hyde Park, but we have uh, J1 students who come and work for us, and some of them can't come home because their home countries have closed the border. Wow. Yeah. So we're stuck with them and dealing with them, and so that might be a problem that might come up with 
between the hotels around between Hyde Park, Morrisville, and whatever. Yeah, Bull area, right? Right. That if they have those same sort of students, they might run into the same problem. So it might be something that at least keep in mind that have to deal with. Thank yeah, you. and has the Snowflake started doing things like closing parts of the resorts? Or well, the we closed our uh, outdoor pool for the season, and we've had a lot of our uh, uh, groups have. Uh, oh, we're sorry, but we we don't felt make it safe enough for us to come there. Yeah, so, yeah, well, mm -hmm. I think that's a lot of yeah. And uh, others are. Uh, no problem, but we are we are worried about that and dealing with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody is the the travel and tourism industry are the is the first big industry seeing the real hits from this, but it's going to trickle down. To, it's going to trickle down to everybody. But we know in in our region we are we are very dependent on travel and tourism. So, well. Yeah. We'll see what we can all do. Thank you yeah, very so, much. Yeah, because you're going to, yeah, and you, if you get tourists from overseas, yeah. they might get stuck here because of yeah, not being able to get home. Being closed. Yeah. Uh, I'm just okay. going to take a take a two second break here. We just got a comment that if the this voice, if you're headed towards, yeah. is really clear. Yep. Yeah. But if it's not, it's not. So if it's not, sure. I don't. Right. I don't think we can keep moving it back and forth. But right. that gets back to the one at a time and repeating. Yeah. Okay. And then talking towards the laptop. Gotcha. Okay. All right, folks on the on the line. We'll we'll work at getting better at this. Okay. Um, town highway summer work plan. So, I'm I'm done. I can go. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for coming in. No problem. <clears throat> Oh, this this one can actually go quick. This can go quick. <laughs> okay. Uh, not that quick, but on the annual summer work plan. Do you, Somebody's parking lights are on out here. I better check, make sure they're all On the summer work plan, we typically have uh, road foreman come in or at least provide a memo what, what the plan is for the work season. Yeah. Which generally starts in April, but who knows, it might start in late March this year, just getting ahead of the weather here. So there's certain things that are done every year that must do, called the must do list that highways are responsible for. Then we have the projects in the middle that are sort of planned in process, should continue to work on but are maybe optional if the board says stop that. And then we have the third column, which we, we tend to get hung up on, which is the <laughs> select board had a priority, um, hadn't figured out the funding yet, need to spend more time on, uh, maybe there's two or three projects with only one that could be done. So how does Mark take the lead on those? So part of the liaison role that we are talking about before is helping Mark prioritize those things and then maybe bring back a project that needs funding but needs select board to get up to date because there's a shortage of funds. Do we stop one project and move funds over to another project? So Mark will get frustrated on that third column because there's there's things that he sees needs to be done or maybe he remembers this was said at town meeting day or something that was promised to voters or residents two years ago that's kind of hung up and needs to move on it. But there's some something that's not getting it into his work plan. So <clears throat> maybe Mark wants to talk a little bit about that, but we're, we're trying to figure out how to communicate between residents and the select board better by trying to categorize the workload they do. And if he works on those must do's out of let's say 20 good weather weeks, and he's using 15 of those, all of a sudden those two other <clears throat> columns only had five weeks to, of work time. Sure. Vacations, sick leave, who knows what else could affect that. You know, a, a Halloween storm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So go ahead. Well, and we've got a lot lift up you know, a from the FEMA storm. Yeah. From the Halloween storm. We've got like every site we've been to. I want to get up in front of that. We have to go back to finish it. have to say it twice. It's not crushed gravel on, it's just yeah. bank run or whatever. 
So most of our sites that we've got to get through winter all need to be addressed more than what we've done. We've got a boatload of ditching we still need to do from that one storm event. And besides that, my, one of my main focuses right now is the drainage problem. The culverts, our drainage, that's big. The problem with us in our ditching is rubber tire backhoe, you don't get as far as you do with an excavator today, by no means. But that's like it's got to be our one of our main focuses is the drainage and the culverts and our ditching. Can I say something? I've been thinking about that and I want to throw it out on the table that we hire a contractor to come in here and do some ditching. Well, we're going to have to like dig in, is a great example. You no. Know, that needs to be done the first thing in the spring. We know the ditches are full. As soon as we can start digging, that needs to be you know, opened up. I mean, just we some... can't, you know, from, to get caught up just from the storm itself, you know, we need more, we need an excavator, we need to hire somebody, we need to get caught up, because we're just gonna go so far behind. I we're mean, already way behind in our ditch before the storm, say to the well, it, it, I, I can see the ditching mark I've been riding around, and I can see the ditching, and if the board can figure out where we're going to get the money, or even if, if FEMA's going to kick in some money for the ditching, because the ditching was done last fall and during October. <coughs> well, some of it, yeah, so, and, but, but not all of it was done. I, I, I would like to relieve you guys of some of getting a contractor in here, if we can afford it, for two to weeks to a month, and just go in there and just do some ditching. But my question was to you, if we got an excavator in here, a contractor in here, can we use our trucks or what do you think? Or should we have a couple other trucks hired? Well, you should have a couple other trucks hired because now we're all still caught up. <coughs> and all that. You know, we need to get caught up. We're not gonna get caught up. For, for trucks. Can we get it done quicker? 100%. Well, we got an excavator right. on the road there. Back. But will it put us, you know, is it gonna put us ahead? Not really because we're gonna be stuck on that project still. It'd be better you know. to get, you know, be working on this road, well, right. Somebody else is taking care of, say, digging road or whatever. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you on that 100%. The ditches needs to be caught up. So, because of that such a big question, Mark and I were talking about how to get this decided on, I guess. Right. Is so, the new liaison and Roger Barry, Brian and Barry, would meet with Mark and then come back April 20th with more details with, with a plan because yeah. we just got to figure out what it would cost and, and um pick pick your battles because april 20th the summer work season will start and right know. well and, and do we want to to do a yeah. to do a meeting before that do we need to go through a spell we had, at the end of the last year we talked about you know the times of the year where we really need to meet twice a month you know that there's just so much a month is just too long in between and it seems to me right now what we need to do is and, and again, with the, with the coronavirus and so many things that are up in the air right now, that just schedule the meeting for two weeks from now, and that'll give you guys time to come back in with a plan to work on the, to work on the budget. But I say that, that I see that is one big work project. The other big work project that we have to get done this year is we've got to, we've got to deal with the garage projects. Okay, the town has given us money and so far it's just sitting there that will not be looked favorably upon when we need more money if the money has been sitting the town, there. The town? <clears throat> the, yeah, garage. The, the garage. The garage. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Has Jason Tony come down and see you yet? Uh, nope. I thought I'd come down to see you about getting some of that stuff done up there. I think uh, Roger Barry is still there. Yeah. I believe. Uh, we talked last fall, uh, I don't remember his name, Harris did our snow guards, and I remember what I gave us, I can't remember what I told you, Roger. I thought it was a good price on the gable end. Yeah. If I remember correctly, I'd have to go back and try to figure that out, but but he would do it in the spring because it was, right, right. That gable end, the screws down on the roofing where I needed were a longer screw. Right. Um, so I expect to see him there. Um, first, first, I can't think of his name, but I know the guy. Yeah. 
That's right. All I, right. It's happening to all of us, Roger. <laughs> I said, that not remembering the name thing is happening to all of us. <laughs> um, so how, how, we can get in touch with him and find out what his schedule is. Uh, I know he gave us a really uh, a good, a very good price. Last year, the problem was I talked to uh, four different contractors uh, about doing the work, and they just didn't want no part of it. One thing, they were too busy, and it was actually too small of a job to where anybody wanted to bother with it. Well, how how about let's with those two with the ditching and the and the and the garage work. For in two weeks from now, we'll have another meeting, and let's have a plan so that we can say, okay, this is the plan, and this is what it this is what it costs. And when we know that, then we know what we have, we still have in the budget, and we can move forward. And I think, as far as a, if we're gonna look into hiring out, hiring an estimator, or whatever, quicker is better. As far as right. getting our bank for our block, because the prices are gonna start going up if we yeah. hold on. Right, we get more work lined up this summer. So quicker we can figure out just getting prices on, we gotta go to three prices. Well, does that, and again, bringing in other equipment, because we sort of, we've started down the path with the Centerville Road <coughs> and the culverts and everything, and agreeing that that was probably another situation where we needed to have outside equipment coming, right? Should we be talking that at the same time? I'd say so. Yeah. Wow. Something's well, gotta be done. Mark said last year in regards, uh, our guys did the shallow ones and did what they could do, but basically the rest of them up there, on the, and Mark, you can tell me whether I'm right or wrong, um, on the center road, is uh, they're real deep and real big, yeah. so we're gonna, we have no choice other than hire a contract to come in and pull those out. Right. And there's very few of them, of the, two, I can't remember their total number up to there, but very few of them we could reach. Right, right. So if you're so, going to do it, you might as well just and some of them, it all. It's at the point where you're almost wasting more time trying to reach it right. than right. to be ordered. Right, better. So so could you, in two weeks, take care of those two, the, the ditching and the culverts? And again, instead to, but to come back with a plan so we know what we're doing. And it may be, well, then we'll make some choices. We'll see right. how much money we got to spend. Because, <coughs> again, with the Centerville Road, because that would... Center. Center Road, right. It would all get done, that part would get done this year, but then we've got to figure out the paving money and how to balance that all out for the year after that. So we got to, right. we, we, we yeah. got to, we got to juggle everything the right way and we can, we, can, we can get it all done, but it's, we just need to do some good planning on it. I do know that the one thing I do want to comment on the highway guys that, uh, they're leveling up to their hell luck good, and I was very pleased how they well they did for that. We are Tuesdays, and we have to go coal patching every day. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, that I, I, I never got a phone call in regards to potholes yet uh, from absolutely anybody up on that road. That's good. That's what we wanted. No, that that uh, that. So, well, Brian, I'll get, Brian and I will get a uh, meet with Mark. And sit down and come up with a plan so in two weeks we can have numbers of a plan of what direction we're gonna go in. Okay. Right. Sounds good. Okay. So all we need to do is get to turn them loose. That wasn't too painful, Mark. That wasn't too painful. <laughs> so when you come back in two weeks, then it'll be painful. <laughs> <laughs> now I'll tell you a little grind roll. Up to the top there, I was up through there. It's pretty bad at the other end. Yeah, it won't be this summer because hopefully that asphalt will be all gone like the other end was. That, uh, that's put what it back I to mean. The that asphalt up, put it back to yeah. gravel. So we did it before, I don't know if you remember, but. No. It, so two years ago, I think, Tom? Yes, think? two years. We brought it back and we've got to go back more. We do that. And yeah, I don't think somebody's going to bring it back. It's pretty. No, take yeah. No, just get rid of it. it up, bring it back to dirt. Bring it back to, to the first entrance or into that. Yeah, it's yeah. It's not as bad as it was. It's a process to get out of there. It's bad. It, it's, 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 it's really bad. Okay. Super. I think, is that it for Rose right uh, now? Prospect Street. Come back with them all. 
There's, yeah. there's no way we're going to pick at each of those yeah. tonight. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. Let's just come back. Here's the plan. And we'll you can't go be in the parking lot on that one. That's right. In, in two weeks, we will devote ourselves to roads. Does that sound good to you, Roger? One day. Oh, yeah. uh, so do you want to set a two week time right now? Yep. You have your yeah, cat. It's fine with me. Yeah, so Monday the 30th is one of the days that's two weeks out. Okay. That'll work fine. Is there a morning meeting? Nine, nine or ten in the morning work for good for you, Roger? I prefer the morning. Yes. That, that probably doesn't work for. I don't know. We're asking. No. <laughs> no, no. no. When, what's the afternoon time for anybody? No? Afternoon? Five. In the afternoon, I can do it at three no later. Three. Three would work. Okay. Three would good for me. Okay, three o'clock on the 30th of March. You got it. So when Mark's around, are you around, Mark? We didn't even ask him. I don't know. We may be working from home that week. <laughs> Stay safe, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. I'll be here in North Carolina, and I'm betting I'll be here. <laughs> you can be able to travel anywhere. Yeah, that's exactly right. Okay. Uh, notice to vacate. This is a new topic related to a tax sale property on Vermont 100. Okay. Um, this is the wild buying street that Roger Yep, yeah, Roger Audet did it all himself. And I guess technically we're landlords right now with a tenant that doesn't have a lease agreement, is not paying water, is not paying taxes, is potentially there. We don't know if we see some activity there from time to time. But we don't know if it's full time, if it's a family, if it's squatters that are unrelated. We have no clue. But anyway, Roger Audet does, with his other hat, provide water service. So I don't know if you have anything, Roger, on that to the mobile home. No, I don't think there's any kids there involved. It doesn't seem like there's anything out there. And he's there from time to time. But I'd say go ahead and we start the paperwork. And and I don't think he's going to do anything to the paperwork. Until the sheriff comes in the end, yeah. Yeah, I think so. And um, then we can get it together and everything <clears> else. And I have a, a buyer that's interested. You yeah. have somebody else that's called. So I say, let's go ahead and start proceeding, get ready to sell it, and get our money back. Okay. So I don't, I don't know if you're familiar where, with the where is the It's just across the river on the left. It's across the, the bridge. If we have a North Fire Park on the yeah. left there. Okay. Double wide there. Yeah. So a double wide. Oh, yeah, with, okay. It's a double wide with what we think is like a roof patch in it. Like somebody wanted to try to fix a leaky roof okay. at one point, but I was it's there. Lean to on it too, I think, in the back. I was there on the Thursday last week. There's a little shed there. Yeah. 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 I was there Thursday last week, and the school bus was dropping off three kids, and the mother was in the driveway picking the kids up. So I know there's they're they're using it for a home base of some sort, whether it's just related to the school bus routes or Hyde Park School, or whether it's they're they're you know part time. Right? We have no idea. But I, I see that drop off every morning. She <coughs> sits there every morning and waits for the school bus. Yeah. I so so I, I come to the car. I can't I can't see that with my terrible glasses. Okay. No, <laughs> I, was, I was just wondering if it was her mother or her doing it. Because they probably used to take care of the kids. Yeah, I don't remember. While she either. worked. So the notice. <laughs> The notice to vacate is a legal thing, okay. which is a 90 day notice, which will start when you sign it, maybe start tonight, and go for 90 days, it'll end in June. At that point, if the property is not vacated on their own, basically, then we have to go to the superior court and get a, a judgment, basically, which will set up how to actually physically remove somebody, which then is the sheriff. And then the building would be secured and then the town makes some more decisions about what to do with the property. Generally speaking, you're not going to be a landlord, per se, collecting rents and all that other okay. stuff. The reuse of the property is totally up to you. If you sell the property, the net proceeds, if you will, of all your costs go back to the original 
uh, prior landowner because it's really a town property at this point. If you hold on to the property, make it a parking lot or take down the mobile home and just clean it up and add it for river access, those kind of public purposes, mm -hmm. then the landowner doesn't get any of that money back because it's still going to be a town property. So those are the 90 day plus decisions, but you can start to think about it now. <laughs> the adjoining landowners contacted me with interest to buy as is, maybe without the mobile home. We never got that far because some people may want to buy it with an encumbrance, which might be a non-livable mobile home or whether they want the town to clean it up and add it to the bill. My guess is that the property itself as a vacant lot, it gets closer to the maximum, the more work you do. So selling the mobile home with as is, maybe with a few repairs, easily get back the town's investment, which is legal bills and everything else. But if you clean the lot and try to sell it as a vacant lot with who knows what condition of water service it has, I don't think it probably has sewer. Who, who knows about the sewer? It's not a municipal sewer up there, it's individual on site. <coughs> you know, you're not gonna you may not get back as much as you think. So maybe you just hold it as town property for some future use, which is what we're doing to the gamble <coughs> the gamble property on the south end of the village. <clears throat> that's about a one acre piece that's that's been vacant and needs potentially some reuse at some point. Mm -hmm. So there's nobody living in it, I mean. No, each day are off and on. It's at least a school bus drop off. We know that. We don't know if somebody's living there full time. Right. Right. Okay. I see he's kind of late there late, late at night. I'm not going to go knock to somebody's door at yeah, right. 9, 10 o'clock. <coughs> yeah, are you talking no. just across from Rick? Yeah. yeah. Oh, he was raking along when I came down tonight. Does he? I didn't have him look up there today. I was gone. Well, somebody plowed all winter for me. He was raking the lawn there tonight. He can be kind of hot-headed. So. We know the sheriff does all the deliveries of notices from now on. Well, no no individual has to go on it. So okay. the vote would be to issue the notice of AK, authorize somebody. I can sign it. Susan can sign it. Just send it, and then we'll send it with the sheriff. That will start the clock, and then we basically just wait. See what happens from there, right? Yeah. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Well, aye. aye. Who's uh, you, okay. you yeah. No, Susan authorized a sign. How's yeah. that? Look, when we call abatement here in June, that's on the list to abate taxes because this current year taxes haven't been made on that. Okay. And because it's now in the <laughs> now. Okay, firework policy. What was the his the history of that? Was was that a prior meeting, right? And we were going to go out and try to think yes. about it. Yes, so gonna... it's a, it's a follow up to that. Yeah, it is. It is a follow up, and there was uh, um, the issue has come up before, um, and and it's uh, uh, some additional information from our last meeting too. But, um. Right. And and uh, last <clears throat> summer, when for homecoming, they did the gigantic fireworks display. The Lamphere <clears throat> had some very serious issues with their tax. They were totally freaked out, spooked, and running through fences. And several of them seriously hurt. Um, we are we are fortunate they didn't go through fences and end up on the road. Um, they've been able to deal with and have sorted out with neighbors in the past when they're just little minor things that, you know, that go on. <coughs> this was, yeah, this was a big professional. Yeah, thing. loads of loads of done in the water, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, we have, uh, we've looked at what other towns have done. I have, uh, a, had a, uh, had a conversation with the sheriff. As I say, I think, I think uh, most of us have been around here long enough to recall many years ago when, when there was a bad accident up there when, when uh, the Lanters were, when they used to cross the, take cows across the road and one morning in the fog, the cows were going across the road and the big truck came up over the hill and that was a very unfortunate situation. And they had a lot fewer cows then. Um, now, when you're talking 400, 500 cows, 
um, if a couple of hundred of those cows were out running on the road in the dark, somebody beside cows would get killed. Um, it really is not, uh, it, it's not safe. And, um, and so we, we, uh, 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 we met with, uh, with Ed Webster because technically the, the fire chief is just two signs. Again, the, the land fears have been frustrated because of things, permits, and it really isn't, when people file, it, it really isn't a permit. It really is a notification. Um, and that's why it goes to the, um, to the, to the fire chief. Because what they're talking about and concern is is, uh, is a potential fire risk, and right now, sort of the only the only reasons he could say no for anything like that were if it had been really dry and there really were a, an issue when the fire could start. Um, so we looked at sort of what other towns have done. Um, in the meantime, counting counting ballots as we were waiting to count ballots. And of course, you all know the the Joneses are making a big swap and going into goats. And um, it just happened to come up in the conversation that apparently that kind of volume of noise is totally detrimental to goats. And they've they've even told their kids that they can't do any sighting of their of firearms or anything around the goats. So. Um, it, it's a, you know, it's, it's a real issue. So we met and we looked at a, at a couple of options as to what the town can do to, um, and what other towns have done. So that's sort of just to give you background and where we, where we are looking for some options. So there, I see three, which is no, ch <laughs> no changes, which is always on the table, which is Ed Webster would review for life safety reasons, those kind of basic things he has to do under the current guidelines and the state rules. And then the middle ground, which is to come up with some kind of buffer around the sensitive areas, like the goat farm, potentially the landfear farm or anybody else that has, we had, we had a call from Lisa, I think it's Lisa Hill across the road. Yeah. She had some large animals that she was concerned about years ago, but for some reason that resolved itself. Um, and then have a buffer around there where the discharge area is on the fireworks. So when the school had theirs, they're shooting fireworks up and potentially towards the land, right above the land for your pasture. Mm -hmm. For example, even though it's a thousand or 1200 feet away, it's still potentially right there. Um, so that's the middle ground, set up some buffer around sensitive areas. We'd have to wait for some people to contact us to tell us where that limit is, and then apply some buffer where Ed wouldn't issue <coughs> if it was less than that. The last, the third option is a prohibition of the public display, which is a big one. And allow the consumer. Yeah, so there's, because yeah. it's, um, Gigantic professional displays that it's just you know it's the constant it's as much and we talked about some other it, it's literally it's the percussion and the and the whole vibration of the whole thing that is that is really bad and it produced again again heading um, but of course they produce it if you've seen they produce a lot of smoke and depending on where the wind's blowing and the big fans that those bars have sucked all the smoke right into there right into the barn, and the barn was basically smelled like fireworks for three days, which, which didn't help the poor cows that were having a tough time. Um, so I, I don't, um, and again, they, they seem to, and just going with, you know, if uh, <coughs> the small neighbors doing things, it basically seem to have sorted itself out all right. I don't know that there is ever going to be a, uh, you know, they're going to want to spend the money on a, on a, uh, on a, on a big thing, and you know, a homecoming thing again. Um, we can, I, but I, I think it really is a, it really is a safety issue that we need to address. What happens when they have a thunderstorm? Well, but see, if you're not, a thunderstorm, it's, it's not, it is, it isn't anything like a, <coughs> Special fireworks thing. I mean, you know, it really isn't relevant. I tell you what, the, 
Thunder does crack up towards you. Yeah, yeah, but it, but it's not that it's not a constant in the life. It just it, you know it, it isn't, and they could end up in that kind of situation. Who knows? But if they end up out on the road and it's a thunderstorm, um, Back to God. yeah, that's right. It's an act of God. It's not something that we, where, where we know this is. There is no doubt this is providing a serious threat. So I, I don't. Um, Again, we want to come up. We could we could do buffer zones. Um, we can, could say. Can, can we limit the fireworks? To, I mean, the lower. Yeah, yeah. We can say no. Well, basically, none of the. What did they you know, call I mean, them? There's different. There's different. No, there's different sizes. Based there's different on the, sizes. The, right. gun, the gunpowder, the spread, or the direction they're shooting. But the hard right. part. Is, hard part is the wind. Where do they shoot it from? The, the more from the ball field. Uh, like soccer. The, up, the, the upper field. Yeah. The, the upper, upper fields, field, whatever yeah. they call it. Yeah. But yeah, but up, it, up where they played soccer uh, so in that the bowling the the park property. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, yeah, they were right up there on top. So we should Which look at other, <coughs> other locations to uh, to maybe have the venue. Yeah, if somebody wanted to, and again, that would get in. You'd say in these areas. Or, yeah, in, I I'd mark. <laughs> You, you, you can't have, um, and again, this is, it seems to me that the issues are these great big professional things that are put on. People doing the individual things are not, you know, yeah. that, that's. I think the ones that Bishop Marshall have are pretty good, but they are that on the level, I don't think. Right, and of course, Marshall does a big display, but that's, you know, that's far enough away that it's. What if they did them down on the old Finnegan field? If that would that sits down there. Um, I don't know. Don't know. Where, where's Finnegan? Well, that, that was it, that near it was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There, yeah. Or how about ten minutes? It's a huge field. Well, yeah. 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 And, 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 and the um, sound effects from it would be covered by the yeah, rush. The rush takes care of them. So yeah, that's yeah. a <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of people enjoy it. I do know that. And a lot of people, when this is all taking place, a lot of people talk to me about it. And, you know, do I want to stop them entirely? No, I'd like to work out a system where people can enjoy themselves. I mean, they had a homecoming. There was probably 500 people there. I'm not sure if anybody went from here, but I mean, you're talking 500 people, but yet you gotta, you know, meet with the farmers too. Yeah, right. And you know, <coughs> and again, if they ended up, the 500 <coughs> people may have enjoyed it. If there'd been 150 cows on the road and four people had gotten killed, it wouldn't have been any fun. No, I understand that, but like yeah, I said, right. the Bishop Marshall ones, I don't think they're. I was there, but I don't think they were as loud as they were the ones that they had at the people's for the cancer walk. The ones at the cancer walk are, the, are pretty close to the professional. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. That, that's uh, a... The ones I put up from Johnson, I, I, I can only go 300 feet, anything about 300 feet. I have to have a license and I have to uh, let the town officials know. So basically you're talking, um, you know, Someone like uh, the ones that come out of Montpelier, you know. That yeah, I, I could check see where Bishop Marshall's so, who does theirs. We stay with North the North Star. North Star. North Star. I didn't think they were that loud. So I don't know if something. And they went up pretty high. If something could be worked out like they do over at Morsel, if we had an event like that, because I know where they let them off at Morsel, right behind Ken Harvey's, we could talk to Ken Harvey. Yeah, and, right. And yeah. see if well, people would yeah. go. See yeah. if people would go over there. I mean, it's a little bit of inconvenience, but oh, at yeah, least people, yeah, we used to. that's where they let them off over there, right? Yeah, yeah, the yeah, and that's, yeah, and that's and a, you know, would that's people a perfectly safe place to do it? Would right? people? Well, I mean, are you know, are they even going to ever again spend that? Well, right. 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 So are they again, going? if you know ahead of time, <clears> they can they can they can make their decision. They, they can make their decision if they wanted to go over to Ken's. We could talk to Ken. Yeah, I'm sure, Ken would. Say yeah. sure, go ahead and let them off. I mean, they could pretty much see them right there at the Oxbow, or they could see them oh, yeah. up there by yeah. Kent's. Yeah, you know, I'm sure something like that, or we could offer them. Uh, I don't know. There ain't no more cows up in the 
Garfield, is there? Oh, yeah. I, 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 I is thought there any the burn? Charlie Davis still there? Yeah, I think Charlie Davis yeah, still there. Charlie got Gales up there. Yeah, yeah. so. Yeah, but, oh, yeah, yeah. I thought Jones's out there. So, Jones right. is out here. So, they took him up there. Charlie just has a farm. But well, now the Joneses are getting out of cows. So, so I, 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 I'm, I'm seeing an answer, Roger. I did. I'm seeing an answer that pretty much says uh, when the fire chief receives a request for public displays, which are not the consumer ones, which right. a lot of people get, maybe five or six a year, <coughs> or less, they're really not that many of the consumer. <coughs> but on the larger ones of public display, that Ed Webster would not approve those. He could review it for all his normal stuff, but he refers it to the board. And then you guys can have this right. kind of discussion on each. And even, even as the farmers to come in. What, whatever, yeah. you can, you would set up your yeah. own procedure to yeah. review them, but rather than have a strict policy or some buffer zone right. calculation, you just say not allowed without select board approval. And, but Ed would still do his first test to make sure it's even feasible. Cool. Yeah. And then we could have a... And then you'd have a meeting with whoever, because every every situation can be different, just like you were doing here. You can go up and down the whole town and try to figure out if Mary right. Jo still has a field without houses in it. I'm talking right. to Roger Audet, because he's got the history. But, you know, when you when you think you're making the right decision, it might be in a year and a half when things have changed. That's why... Yeah. Right. So, and Garfield could end up being a great place to do. But that would be a policy change that we don't have right now, which you would... We write something up just to be totally clear for April meeting and say firework policy, here's what the deal is, here's how it works. You know, I'd kind of like to kind of meet the people halfway. <coughs> the homecoming people are coming home. Yeah. Right. They're all happy, but then you got the farmers got to watch out because it's their herd. If we can just draft for four times. Okay. Okay. We'll be we'll halfway. Draft and see if we're there. For your monthly meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, for the regular. I'll go up to your place. Okay. And if you want, they don't care me. If I have a cow, I'd build the fence. Yeah, we could have them up in National Guard. I still do it. I can build it. Okay. All righty. The uh, letter of support for the grant for the opiate interdiction. Yeah, this needs a, a motion to approve. Here's a letter. If anybody can see I think I think we sent this out yeah. to everybody. Yeah, I just want to make sure it goes on. Yeah, okay, here we go. Roger is, uh, is uh, going for a, a grant position to have. Give Roger Barry one. <laughs> yeah, you got yours, Roger? Scan it for me. <laughs> right. You still up? Yeah. <laughs> I'm all up. Yeah. Hey, still we're here. giving you a paper. You a little ball game tonight, huh? No ball games, period, right? <laughs> uh, Roger Berry, we're looking at a letter that Susan signed in support of a grant to the um, that Roger Marcou is, has submitted already uh, to seek full time funding for a opiate interdiction and mental health counseling patrol officer. Uh, basic. Okay, so that's what we're, we're looking at now. And for anybody else online, that's what we're looking at to see if the select board would issue. Uh, reaffirm Susan's action that was yeah, taken, was say yes. <laughs> taken out of a regular uh, meeting schedule. Fine with me. Yeah, Go move. I'll take it. Second. Okay. Who's second down there? Right. 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 Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Oh, now we get some good stuff. Fire service costs. Okay. This is just the, and, uh, hey, Roger Berry, we're, we're looking at a, uh, a February report of sorts that I was trying to put together on fire service costs for yeah. Hyde Park, uh, Town Fire Department, North Hyde Park Eden Fire Department, and trying to figure out what 
the yeah, select what the select board wants to see for more information or no information. It's sort of an incomplete report because I didn't want to go too far and then the board say, you know, can you go in this direction? So initially what we're looking at are the taxpayer contributions from both towns and the fire service costs from both towns' budgets. And then comparing those to other towns around us, including an inventory of capital assets from the surrounding towns that usually help out the fire department if there's a call, whether that's Stowe, Morrisville, et cetera. And what else is in there? There's a, a listing from North Hyde Park about all the equipment they have on each of their trucks, which I don't have yet added to the pile from the town fire department. So, I, I guess I'm just looking for direction because we, we talk about fire services at regional level, we talk about mutual aid, we talk about uh, the cost share between the two towns, but I'm not sure what else you all need as a board and what direction you're headed in or, or what, what the next step is. Well, I think we need to list some high power with they have. On each truck? On each truck. and compare how much equipment is in this town. Ron, we, we found oh, there's somebody in the state that's putting together the money to look at a regional approach, right? Mm -hmm. What's the study? Yeah. I don't know yeah. Who's doing that. For some reason, I had Dover in my brain that was down yeah. in that part of the state. Oh, yeah, the RFP. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I know that um, it isn't just Vermont, it's all over the place. Trying to figure out, if, it's again, it's like looking at, 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 uh, at the sheriff and trying to come up with a sustainable plan. It's looking at, at, at the fire folks and, and you know, how do we come up with a, with a sustainable plan? Trying to, you know, and, and so part of that is just it's getting a handle on because sometimes, and, and it certainly can vary in region, sometimes folks have, um, you have plenty of volunteers and you turn out and it works fine and then the community will get a time where they're just, you know, they're, you know, they're really short. Um, we're, we're trying to, um, <clears throat> as we're still struggling with trying to, trying to figure out how to take and, and, and provide the reimbursement to our firefighters um, and as a stipend that got us really looking at the at the number of firefighters and actually the amount of the amount of hours that each one actually puts in and all I get is is down at this end of town you end up with a little handful of people that are really doing it all. and and again I think it, it's you know people will look away or they don't or it's I for variety of reasons. I don't know what it is, but it was, uh, and that just recently, again, I've asked Ron trying to, um, trying to look at these numbers in a whole different bunch of ways, and I, and I know, um, but, but it's like the conversation we're having about, about paying for basic physicals for, for our volunteers, for our firefighters. Um, it, it, it is not an attempt to, uh, to have people be or not be, it really is a, a, uh, a sincere feeling that if people are willing to put in the time and energy and literally risk their lives as a service to the community, then the community has some, has, I, has some real responsibility back to those people that provide those services. And trying to find a ways of a variety of ways to do that and and to take care of people because I think from um, rescue squads, firemen, policemen, hospitals, they all sort of fall into the same thing: is that um, people don't know and they don't care anything about them until they need them, and at that moment when you need them, you would pay any amount of money on the face of the earth to have them there. Um, our our job overseeing it all is to figure out since we don't have all the money on the face of the earth is is how do we how do we provide those services in a in a in an affordable manner 
and take care of the folks that are that are providing the services. Because you have to see with it. without the folks, you don't have the services. It's it's you know, yeah, it might save some money, but but when those people want those services, they're going to be really unhappy. That's why with the the sheriff's budget is a little bit easier because law enforcement really is more of a day-to-day -day thing, and people at at, um, at a minimum will then complain because they aren't out stopping enough speeders on the on the back roads. <coughs> um, but it it really is financially how do we how do we have it be sustainable? Uh, because people might think they don't want it, but as soon as you took it away, you know that that, that doesn't work either. So we're, we're trying to look at it, and, and, um, and you are all really helpful with the information, but kind of looking at the money and the numbers and the hours in different ways, and how do we have this long-term plan? As the cost of equipment just you know continues to skyrocket, uh, what do we, and again, that's why I see other parts of the state are looking at it. So if you look, if you look regionally, and we already have mutual aid, and we have all these remarkably complex things that I'm completely convinced I will never understand. Um, but but how does it? You know, how do we how do we get it to work? How do we take advantage of and and optimize the resources that we have in the region? Um, because and I can look at this, you know. A lot of us aren't getting any younger. And how do you get those younger people that are willing to willing to make a serious time commitment? Because it, it is, um, you know, this is a time commitment, but it's nothing compared to what you know what your EMTs and you all go through in the training. Plus the the things that you are exposed to. You know, we might get an angry constituent come in and yell at us, but that's about the, you know, it's not it's not literally the horrible things that, that you all are asked to deal with periodically. So so that's that's really what this is what this is all about, trying to take the long view. So it's the as we look at the numbers, what is what is in the and again, not um, working with all of you, but how do we end up with a with a long term plan that you know that works for everybody. So that's why I'll you know start another year I got really I'm not I'm not anti fire departments at all. Um, but but again, as you know, as as, a, as taxpayers, so, well, we just you know figuring out some some things with what you really need. The, the tire, you know, the tire and cost of replacing tires was just the whole thing to come up with, which was oh, okay. Well, it turns out they say nationally you need to replace it, but they are here in the lot. They're saying, look, you know, as long as it's good tread and it's safe, here's what your here's it passes. This this is okay. But that it makes sense to start putting some money aside every year so that we have a tire replacement fund. Because, you know, if you suddenly have three trucks that all need new tires, you're, it's like, yeah, it's not like the tires on the car. You know, it's a, it's a tremendous expense. So it's, and again, it's with, just sort of seeing that as part of the equipment. So we're, that's what we're trying to do. That's why we're asking all these questions. That's why we're trying to look at the, at the, at the numbers differently um, and have people feel as though they're, uh, they're, um, it continues to be worth the effort that you all put in to take care of us. So I don't, I don't know if it's the numbers that we already have, what other kind of information would we like to have? Well, like I said, we need to get the equipment from Hyde Park if they have on their trucks. Yeah. And then look at all the equipment together and get our heads together. And while we're on the subject, I am just wondering why we aren't building the town of Balvinier for going over there. We haven't made the decision whether we were or not. Yeah. Not well, uh, Hyde Park's gone, I think, Waterville and Balvinier once, or both to Balvinier. Been to Belvedere once, Waterville once this year. They are not in a new trade system. And I don't see why my taxes have to pay for the town of Waterville and Belvedere. We'll bring that up at our officers' meeting. We haven't, we haven't made a decision on it yet. I, okay, well, I've talked about it with yeah, RJ, we mentioned it to Eddie before, and nothing's been done to either yeah. one of them. RJ just got in touch with me in the end of this past week. And just 
to know where we're at and we're charging on this. We haven't had an officer's meeting. Yeah, so what do those communities usually do? They just, they have a fire and... They pay a retainer fee to Johnson, the okay. village of Johnson, Cambridge. I don't know if they have a retainer fee, but David has checked in Cambridge and they get paid if they get called in there. Uh, now, if we go stadium at Johnson's, a different story. Wait, wait just a second. Sorry. What? Is that Carol? It's Allie. Allie. Hi, Allie. Hey, can you ask me what's being said? I can't hear anything. Sorry. Rob's okay. okay. Yeah. Um, let me see. Right now, we're talking about uh, Belvedere, and should Belvedere be billed for the for the services? And they and they haven't been. Um, Roger has had talked to Ed and nothing has happened. And uh, North High Park hasn't talked about it, but they're going to bring it up at their at their next meeting. And I was just asking, so how, how do they, what do those communities do when you when you don't have anything? And they currently, they pay a retainer to Johnson. And we're not sure, does, did you know, do they pay a retainer to Cambridge or does Cambridge just build off? Because you were not on the dual tone on that call. So the question I have on the Belvedere call, Northside was toned out primary on it because Johnson was at a call in Waterville. Northside Park Heat and Fire Department is the one that requested Hyde Park, not Johnson. Yeah. On that. So I don't know how you want to work that. Did you go to Waterville? We didn't. Not that time. Not that time. No, but you still went to Belvedere. Yeah, but under the mutual aid agreement. If you, if, they, if you guys had gone to North Lake Park, you would have been covered under the mutual aid. You went directly to C. Yeah, per yeah, request to North Lake Park. Doesn't make any difference. You went directly to C. They're not in the mutual aid system. We've been through this back 10, 15 years ago. Fuck. I'm not going to get this yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I think I think that's what wise. I, I agree. I've done this for 28 years. Right. And the town of North Lake Park Fire Department has never sent Belvedere or Waterville a bill. I could prove you wrong okay. on that. Well, I don't. Yes. So wait, so stop, time. please, both of you. Stop. <laughs> why is why haven't we sent them a bill? We haven't decided if we are or not. Yeah, we. Like no, but I'm saying in, in in the past, if we haven't sent bills, is it just it's a because if we, we get called in as a mutual aid? Yes. Okay. I think the the real point, which I think I've gotten poor responses from the fire departments in general about this, and this is not anybody's fault, but the mutual aid agreements, the non mutual aid agreements, the dual tone, and the local calls are all different categories of call. right, right. So if you're if you're not absolutely clear in your written documents, you're going to get what's happening here tonight. Okay. So I think one way to do it for your officers is say this is a good chance for North High Park to say what happens when we call High Park for backup. Okay. Who, right. You, your whole crew goes up, and you need somebody to sit at the station maybe to cover the area. Is that a mutual aid call? Is that a backup call? Is that a no charge call? I, I have no idea. But you can run through a probably a dozen different scenarios and cover everything. Just from your own experience, it's not complicated necessarily. And then, well, now, now I really get pushy. And then, wouldn't it make sense for everybody to have that same? Here's what it means, so that that when Johnson calls or came or anybody, that it here's what it means. Well, I, I don't know. I don't know what the right answer is, but not having a document to refer to to what I see as a handful or maybe a dozen different scenarios makes. Ill will that, to a sort That's where we get into trouble. <laughs> but if you had a discussion between the fire departments and the there, board, there was, the bill, there was a discussion about the new trade was started. Before the town of could get into the new trade system, they had to furnish something, give something back to the county. Valdez and Waterville can't give you back nothing because they have nothing. That's the way it was when he joined with North Fight Park so they could get into the new trade. That was way back uh, before in, some of these guys were around. Truck. Okay, I, I saw those. Actually, I ran across those. That's how we got that other truck. Yeah, okay, gotcha. I did run across those select board minutes, actually. Yeah. 1992, I think. Yeah, I can't remember, but it was around there. But anyway, the, my point in all that 
and, and I don't think we need to talk about it anymore, is if you do not have the written documents, regardless of the history, I don't think the history is as important as updating the documents with the current people, those people that have to come in and participate on that, whether it's both fire departments and all the select boards and all the towns, just like we do with NEMS, need to have something that's dated 2020. <laughs> and you could bring your own history and say we should or shouldn't. I'm so, not saying the history is not important, but this this basically is what we can do it internally in our department. But Ron? basically, this is mutual aid, so we could that should be brought up in mutual aid. Right. <coughs> okay. Yeah. Just, is that Carol? Yes. Yes. Um, two two things about that. One, I agree with Ron that you need that uh, rock solid mutual aid agreement, and the other regarding. Uh, cost. Uh, the last thing you need is is fire department at an incident trying to decide whether to call another department in uh, based on cost. Yeah, right. You, you don't want them to not call a department in because um, yeah. it may cost too much. Right. I mean, that that right. needs to enter into a department thinking process as a see. No, you're right. That's a good point, Carol. But that, and again, I think that's where, if you've got here's what it means and here's what you do, then it won't enter because you'll know what it does. Yeah, the, the fire department should just be saying we need a second alarm, and county dispatch sends whoever that is. Sounds remarkably reasonable to me. Well, that's how it worked out. Yeah, okay. that, that should all be yeah. decided ahead of time. So, in whatever district, street, whatever the fire is, and the, and the incident commander says we need to go to a second alarm, county dispatch says, okay, that's this engine, this engine from there, this other engine's going to cover whoever's fire station. And it just happens. Okay. I, I don't know what the mutual aid agreements look like, but. That's what, at least in my opinion, they should look like. That is, I don't mean to break in, but yeah. that is one of the subjects that the chiefs have talked about to make it easier on <coughs> that. Call on a second alarm, they automatically know who what to rolls do. what. Yeah. And like, you know, I will say one thing when there's a structure fire or when it comes to personal safety, I don't think about cost. Yeah. I, I worry about that after the fact. Right. Yeah. Right. Which is as it, as it should be. So, regardless, in this case, Johnson called us because they were on another call and they called us to go up there because they weren't sure they were going to get there in a timely manner. So, they called us basically as mutual aid. Yeah, okay. And said, Look, we can't be there. Can you guys take it? Of course, we took it. Mm -hmm. It's called working together. We even had Lowell cover our station because we knew. Yeah, so maybe Lowell Johnson sent us far from us forever. Did, <laughs> we did Morrisville come back to do town? No, they stayed in Morrisville. Yeah. So nobody was at town. We didn't even tell one truck. Had one truck. One truck. We didn't even tell Marshall. We had left one left truck. No, I, was, I was wondering if there's yeah. a backup of dominoes of people. Yeah, there is. Right. If we would have pulled our last truck, we would have had Marshall cover. Okay. Before. We so call that, it. That's another scenario. Wrong. We call it backfilling. Right. So okay. that way, yeah. no station yeah. is not covered. No, I understand. I'm just saying when we're thinking about this, how to get it in writing, it's it, right. the concept is easy, but to actually put it down and say. Yes. Yes, basically, you can think about it. We'll send water bill a bill and we'll get a bill from Lowell. So, how's it going to work out in the end? It's all everybody working together. Uh, yes, to a certain degree. We have, we have that discussion on the highway about are we working with Eden? Is Eden going to barter and come back and bring help us with sand in the summer? Yeah. The answer is yes. There's no written agreement. We just know that the right. road foremen are working in order to do it. But mutual aid is a little bit more complicated when you start having a board. Look at policies, procedures, costs. It's the natural thing to say: Is it time to put it in writing or not? Right. That could be a decision of the board. Say, no, we've looked at this forever. <clears throat> the departments are doing fine on their own based on what we found out. No need to go any further. Or yes, there's some issues with taxpayer costs that we need to write down and be able to explain to people. Yeah, the biggie is just to be able to explain to people. Um, I think that's the that's the important thing. It sounds like you had conversations about wanting to get it written down anyway. So, what can we do to support you in working to get it written down, among all the other things that you have to do? 
Mm -hmm. Well, like I say, this is this is a, actually a mutual aid issue. Yeah. So and the meeting will be held the second week of April, depending on okay. how many can actually be in the same room together. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh. yeah. So I don't think it's a right or wrong issue. It's an accountability, accountability. Yeah. Yeah. issue. And I believe that uh, it just got to pull our minds together and figure it out. Okay. All right, I got this. That was it for me. Okay. I don't know what your next action item is for the minutes on this, but I could I could go back cool. and we could just work on Roger's request for now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's just and we'll think of something. We'll be in touch and again what we can do to support the whole mutual aid thing. In the meantime, I will work on getting a list of equipment what we have on our trucks for you. Okay, great. Is there a certain time period you want it by or uh, I'll try to report back to the board on the twentieth of April if that's twentieth. Yeah. That's yep. cool. yeah, that'll be fun. And did John or Brett send me your equipment list for each truck? Do you have that? Have you seen those for the North High Park? I haven't. Okay. Yeah, so there's a really good it's like an Excel form or some yeah. form that just we used to have one. I got it somewhere up from years ago. I would, I, all I got to do is update the inventory of each truck. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's a really easy kind of snapshot of that truck. Next yeah. page is the other truck. So. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I can get that done for you guys. Okay. 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 Thank you. I got just one question for Brad. Oh, yeah. Do you see anything in the fast squad that with this virus? That might be spending money or something, or are you well, um, all my fast squad members, if they go on a call, um, Dot and George aren't going to go on many, um, because first of all, of their age, yeah. Um, so what does that bring you down to? I got myself, Ben Collier, and uh, the Mike Ridland, I think it's. His, that is his name. He's an airline pilot that lives up oh, yeah. um, talk, on Diggins Road. Yeah. Um, so, um, if we get called for a potential case, we're supposed to be all geared up in suits and that, um, in uh, N95 mask, which is completely impossible to get now. Okay. Um, just like the toilet paper issue and all that. Uh, it's just, this has just gone hay completely haywire, um, you know, and then we have to decon ourselves. And then if we go into a residence and we don't have all the protective gear on, right. then we're gonna have to self quarantine ourselves for the 14 days. <clears throat> so, so, Susan. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking we probably should think about it. And if he needs some of this stuff, we should probably let him get it. Myself. I well, see, first of all, is it impossible to get is, is the first question. Well, but, but it's one of now backing up even a further step. So now, any call while this is still a complete unknown and scary mystery to all of us, when you get a call for anything, are, is, is one of the first questions going to be have you been exposed? Right. Has the person you're going to get right. exposed? In, you have any reason um, to think that you are at any risk? So of our dispatch centers are helping us out because they did make it mandatory for all PSAPs that answered 911 calls to ask okay. some of these questions. Yeah, right. So instead of putting it over the airways for scanner landing gear, they're having us call dispatch over the phone and okay. they're giving us yep. that information. Yep. Yep. You know. Um, we had a call Saturday. That situation happened where it were, there was a potential, and they toned us out. And then they said, "Can you call dispatch?" You know. So, if any of my fast squad members go, we don't have no N95 mask. Period. <coughs> um, so they would have to wait at the residence that ambulance got there because I'm stocking enough N95 mask on our trucks in case we have to call for the fire departments to come in for assistance. Um, what I did 
Saturday for the fire guys, I went in and bought, <coughs> bought some of them uh, um, disposable paint suits. Oh, yeah. So, because it's basically what we're using um, on the ambulance, you know. So I went out and I bought a bunch of different sizes and the ambulance crews for my area, they've been told if you request fire, you need to tell them exactly how many people you need because I don't want six to 10 firefighters coming in and all getting exposed when you only need two of them to help you lift. So, and um, I haven't talked to John yet. I've talked to RJ today and our guys Thursday night told them if we call there to go to the back of the ambulance inside and where the, the N95 masks are there to grab them and put them on with their um, high park, with their white suits <coughs> and Johnson's gonna wear their rescue coveralls and then they're gonna take them off once they're done the call, put them in a garbage bag and bring them back to the station and wash them. Um, so, so the fast spot members, we don't have anything. And I can't, and I can't get N95 mask. Um, <clears throat> I can try uh, Susan, can state. I interrupt a minute? Yeah. We've been on this subject for 26 minutes. We beat the dog around the bush long enough. Let's move on to the next item. Okay, I have one follow-up, Roger Barry, is that today we received a, a form in the mail to request any supplies we need from the Federal Strategic Reserve. So right. they they don't guarantee anything, but we have to we put our that. we have to put our name on the right. list. So I, if Brad hasn't seen that yet, it's not a it's not a guarantee, but it's everybody's asking for the same same stuff. The same thing. Right. So we'll, we'll we can close on that, and we'll work. We know, make sure we're okay. getting those things in motion if you have to. Very good. Okay. Thank you, Jill. Kim, are you waiting for us to just do the dog stuff for you? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I was going to say. No, Thank you, Brad. If you up on that, you'd say, hey. <laughs> Susan, get this done. Okay. Um, Okay, the, um, our annual $8,000 from the Harvey Sterling View loan transfer. We've been the, um, the past couple of years, we've split it between economic development and highway. and highway. So that we start to build up our economic development fund. So move. I would. I think that's you know that works well because because we know the great thing with highway is it's a bottomless pit that you can always put money into. <laughs> and looking at the list up above, I'm going okay. Second. So, okay, um, Roger, you got that with the uh, the eight thousand dollars that we um, that we get from the Harvey Sterling View loan that will continue with our split of half of it into economic development and the other half into highway. That's correct. Gotcha. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody aye. opposed? Okay. <clears throat> you know, um, how much you get when the park is sold? I, do we get our lumps of so much? I think it's down, or? yeah, 40 to 50, somewhere in there. Yeah. That's when it's right. like June yeah. is the closing date. Right. That's if they Walton succeed. gets it, we get it, right? Yeah. Well, that's our share. I think Walton yeah. gets yeah. the yeah. 20 that's or 30 So when, when the yeah. park is sold, part of it is he has to pay off the loan. Right. Um, and again, that could, <clears throat> I, I, I think I'd be that look at the same kind of split, but that's an opportunity <laughs> to put another nice chunk into the road, which might go into equipment or something like that to have the good <laughs> yeah. You look at that road up there, the trailer park, I probably know where it can go. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's eventually going to have to be done. It'll, we'll get there. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, what about art councils and infrastructure? Oh, yeah. So this is an outcome of the Better Connections project that ended in January, where there was a request or community uh, goals to try to improve the connection between the rail trail and Main Street for revitalization. 
this is one of those pieces which would uh, through the Vermont Arts Council provide $5,000 to hire an artist to look at the gateways and entrances into the village from the rail trail for improvement, whether that's stone walls or plantings or artwork type of thing that people can stop, pretty much just catch their attention. And then you have the signage next door, which is already there with the blue wayfinding signs to tell them what's up on Main Street. So it's sort of a dual, it's kind of the last thing that we do along the rail trail, which is make it more inviting or make it more interesting to people to visit. So we'd be more of a stop on the rail trail because they're seeing tens of miles when they're on their trips. And what reason would they have to stop to get off their bike or take a rest? You give them a reason. And that's what this specific program is for, for the Vermont Arts Council. It's for improving infrastructure in towns and to do that with an artistic local artist involvement, which also brings some interest to people. Some people like to go see their artwork wherever they are. Does that cost us anything? <laughs> no, the 5,000 is from the Vermont Arts Council. That's the- That's so the much of Is it restrained to that area down there, that, uh, the rail trail, or is it- <laughs> We have three points. We, we in an application that went in. So this is one of those affirming a prior decision things. Yeah. The grant deadline was in between your meetings. Uh, the three points are the Depot Street, which we already located, partially built, a new site at West Main where the where rail trail crosses, where they, there's a large wayfinding sign now, but nothing else. And then the uh, Pocket Park area on Main Street is another spot. So all three of those would be tied together potentially by the same okay. artistic treatment, whatever that happens to be. Cheap enough. But we won't know. This is just a plan. Yeah, there'll be multiple public meetings, a selection committee of type, you know, project team type thing. Right. Peter Gallo from High Park Arts uh, has agreed to be on that. Uh, Greg Paws, who designed some of the work already for the both the pocket park and the trailhead has agreed to be on it. Plus we'll put a plea out in front porch. Probably eight seven eight people maybe to help the artist figure things out and select the artist too i think the yeah, first one right. you send a, a uh, what do they call it a, a call call the artist or something they use in that world we have a project you'll be paid are you interested in working in hyde park and then you get a list of hopefully three people to pick from that person goes on to a design process that's completed in december that design, whatever is selected, is the one that you have another round of grant funding donations to get it installed. So, I have first okay. and second. Who had the first done that? Roger. Second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, Roger Berry. I heard Annual of liquor license renewals. You have those. Four. I make a motion to renew the license, the annual license liquor renewals for, um, I need to tell you. got everybody, right. For well, the, there's, there's two there. For um, two there. VFW. VFW yeah. and Ten Ben. And um, Pork and Gavel. Ten Ben's did not get theirs back in time for the meeting. Okay. Theirs is an outside consumption permit. Oh, all right. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. For the whatever two there is there. Like your own Do we have a second in that? Second. Okay. You need all of us to sign it? Or? Yes. And well, Roger Berry, if you can stop by sometime to sign it, you'll see Kim. We can hand it through the computer to you. Yeah, that's right. Make an appointment. Call Kim for an appointment. <laughs> what do you say? That's right. <laughs> I know where we're at. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm going to take them apart. I just got this condition where she yells at me. <laughs> there you go. Now I don't have to yell at you. <laughs> Susan's the one that takes them apart. I know. It's not my fault. 
to uh, accept the minutes of um, that February I don't know. Is Allie? I, I think Allie yeah. included him. Yeah. 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 Just make sure you're getting it, Brian. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm on my phone going like. Wow. I spoke with Brian last week about time order. Okay. Thank you. Can't remember from day to day, so. <laughs> <laughs> we have um. This rubber band with it. Yeah. Let's just get that. Um, since we do it this way, it's a real time saver. So is there seems to be have to figure out the future how because it's hard for people to hear is, is there a, do we point in another direction? Do we how do we 
How do we make it easier and better for people to hear? I, I, we're doing a test tonight with speaker. Well, we're doing we're doing a test tonight on live stream. So tonight the meeting is being live streamed on YouTube. That mic is picking up their feed. So people that are okay. only on this system may be having difficulty, but if they opened up YouTube, then we can get you know, very good audio, I think, from all the mics that are here. Whether we can tie the mics into the phone conference, I don't think they're so. On. Okay. I don't know if they're on or not. No. Why are you doing that? It'd be you feeding feed right noise. into the it'd be feeding right into the YouTube. I'm not I don't have YouTube going. Oh you don't know, they do that from, don't do that anymore. Oh, <laughs> they, do, they do that from YouTube, from the studio. They're taking the live stream here, then they post oh, it's it. Oh, it's not going through the, these things? They're probably the people that were listening just heard some big banging. That's my guess. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Sorry about, that. Sorry about that. that. Unless you have YouTube open, you're not going to hear it. That's right. Oh, yeah. so. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's that's one of the answers. Is if this works out tonight and they can continue to live stream on YouTube, then the call in is just for people that have a question. Gotcha. Okay. <clears throat> and they can otherwise watch it on YouTube or on their phone or whatever. Right. You know, they don't have to have you know, big computers. <laughs> <laughs> so what, Mike, Mike get the public access channel. I will kind of do a download after this yeah. and just talk to people and check it out. Yeah, okay. tune it up. All right. All right. Make a motion to accept the town orders. Right. Second. All, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Um, <laughs> do we have any? Well, let's see. We got anything else, Ron? Or we? we have a few things from the meeting. And during the sign discussion, Susan had asked to put together a summary of what the 2018 <coughs> ordinance did to the cost of the right. town highway. So we didn't know what the costs were of all those. When the ordinance went through in 2018, we added about 20, 20, 25 roads to the traffic ordinance that dealt with speed, previously unsigned. So when you do the traffic ordinance, you have to follow up on the sign. The sign cost for the 2018 ordinance was $20,000. So oh. when, you, when you update <laughs> So when you update the ordinance, whether you change a speed limit, whether you say, check it out for MUTCD standards, whether you adopt new roads, has a direct sort of impact to the, the budget. So the budget's $5,000 a year. And Elise Clancy at town meeting day stood up and said, uh, didn't you guys adopt an ordinance a couple of years ago? You're still working on it, where are you at? And Mark French has always told me from the beginning, we are going to have to phase that in. So that's the process we've been on. Mark hasn't, because of that, and the board not pushing the issue, so to speak, he was gonna work off that $5,000 and gradually take care of it. But the question I think from I think Lisa and, the, and Susan to me was, what is the cost to do that all by, let's say December, 2020? Yeah, all right. So there's, that's the number that is a good guess. It's still not accurate because it's there's 85 signs that would have to be looked at. And then when you're out there, you're going to say, that sign's crooked, bent, you know, that should be done. So anyway, that's the question. I don't know if it's a budget question to say, to respond to Elisa. Thank you for bringing that up. We've actually included in this next year's budget $10,000 to accelerate what would have been a five or six year plan. Well, let's say, let's say needed. Needed is 80, 81, I guess that number. I think, I think we ought to, we ought to send one of these. No. These uh, out to everybody. They are, they, are need, they are not there yet. 81 signs are needed. One of these I papers know, so out there. Are, oh, because we changed the speed. Really and, and some were not in the ordinance. Some roads were not in the ordinance. <laughs> okay. And then we added a bunch of roads that were more heavily traveled that previously had no speed. <laughs> In the yellow box at the bottom, you see a list of other roads that we've actually had requests on over the years that were not included in the 2018 ordinance. So there's right. there's actually that list of six or seven road segments that people have asked for that didn't make it to the 2018 ordinance that you all have to decide whether to keep going on ordinance revisions or not, and then add to the 81 signs. <clears throat> or the other option, practically speaking, is you look through the 81 and say, 
we're, we're going to take some of those off the ordinance. They, we shouldn't have added those to the ordinance. And that automatically reduces your speed or assign speed number that's needed. But that would be hard to do since you already presented to the public once and nobody objected. So mm -hmm. you, could, you could do that, which is an ordinance amendment to take off some of them. This is not all the roads in the town, it's probably half. So the people living on the road suggested these, or is there something that we have to follow for? I'm trying to figure uh, figure out where it all. Yeah, so right. So the roads that were added were added most mostly by request. So we had yeah, okay. Centerville, Center Road. Yeah. And then we had a list of another 70 roads. And we decided not to add the dead end road with two houses that had 500 feet of length. Yeah, right. Makes sense. So those are not in the ordinance generally, but I did find some when I did the site inventory that's like maybe that should just come out of the ordinance because it's a it's two houses and it's 300 feet long. So you'll see those notes in the right uh, column there. Yeah. That are questionable whether you want to keep them in the ordinance. Like Green Rose River Reservoir. Now that's going right out to the reservoir, right? Yeah, so there's no I I call them no outlet roads which are longer than 300 feet that maybe you can't see around a corner or maybe it's two miles long like Green River, which is a mile and a half, I think, that maybe you do have some long straightaways where you don't want people going to 60, which is the default speed. It's pretty rough up there. there. <laughs> Doing wow. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Well, well, or... Yeah, we just put in speed bump. Or, <laughs> or, <laughs> or maybe what we need to do is look at this and prioritize, you know, get half done this year and... Okay. Half done the next year and prioritize, you know. Let the budget dictate it. The, the getting it done. That's what Mark's been doing. He's he's trying to use his five thousand to get the ones that were getting the most requests from him for Center Road and Center Hill Road. Makes sense. And then uh, we've got more requests since part of Garfield got Garfield. signed. What about Trombley and the lower part of Garfield, which feed into that road, which weren't part of the ordinance? Yeah. So do you add those to the ordinance and then add in, you know, a dozen more signs? So you said just about half of the roads? Yeah, well, the named roads, I guess you can say named roads. I didn't see Ferry Street on here. It's not important. <laughs> yeah, come up, watch them go up through it. <laughs> yeah, what I'll bet, yeah. Um, so, folks, what should we... Uh... There's two questions. The yellow box, what do you want to do with that? That's the uh, ordinance amendment. And then there's the funding question on the 81. Uh, accelerator, continue Mark's phase approach with limited funds. So you're looking at a five-year plan, maybe, or something like that. To, to catch up with I know you. what you can do it. I mean, you can't do them all. Well, the other problem is, if you even if you said uh, we have the money to do it, for some you, reason, you gotta get it done. The highway crew should not be taking out to signs for five or six weeks, right? Because then they right. they've lost their summer work season, right? So then you're into a contractor. The contractor price is kind of this price. The so twenty thousand. Yeah, does that? Yeah, yeah. This is a contractor price at twenty. So if you wanted to contract okay. it out, it's twenty. If you want the highway crew to do it, you're gonna lose work. Yeah, uh, dirt, maybe we'll dirt, have, maybe we'll have a lot of help. <laughs> it's pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you're just using the pre existing posts that are there and you're changing out some of the signs on some of them, right? No, no, no. 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 Yeah. Signs, yeah. Post and signs these, aren't there. These are missing yeah. signs. Yeah. Okay. okay. We yeah. haven't even looked at the existing yeah. signs, but you could probably double that 80 by looking at existing signs. Right. Either, you need to clean up. Right? Yeah, not safety yeah. breakaway. I'm oh, think, oh, thinking maybe that's something the crew can do, but. Uh, we don't have the equipment to uh, set the poles. Not quickly, like Lafayette would be able to. But anyway, that's that was where we stopped. Was I'm going to answer for that one, but I'm not going to answer it now. Okay, <laughs> remind me. So, Ron. Yes, Roger. Uh, how many uh, weeks does the road crew think it's going to take to change all signs? Uh. Because they're all new installs, Mark was thinking at least four to five weeks. Yeah, that's why I was saying it. That's why the price the price is so high, because it, again, this is one of these things you really want to contract out. <laughs> so, so 
Your new committee. What's well, well yeah. Committee. But but has Mark been spending five thousand dollars a year on signs? I haven't looked at the history. I don't have, don't know the answer. I know he tries to work under that, and sometimes he doesn't get any done because of the weather or whatever. So he's more than likely he's been below five thousand already. There's one of our match, so the the money's allocated for it, but it ends up being spent on something else. Oh, so I, don't, I, I wouldn't say that. I would say it's unallocated, on done. Okay. It's still there, and it stays in their stays in their coffers. Well, I guess we're just probably going to have to hire it done. We can't keep yeah, right. Can't keep going behind. We got to go forward here. Ron, how many signs are supposed to be replaced? Well, this, oh, because you don't have it. This, it's, 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 sorry, Roger. It's 81 signs. Why don't we do half this year and half next year and hire it out? Well, the, the, the entire uh, cost would be, well, I'll say it would be 20000 and we could get them all done. Yeah, do we have the 20000 to spend? Uh, well, well, do we, do we even have, have 10000 <laughs> Um, well, well, you, you. If we budgeted five thousand dollars, let's stick with that and see how we go along. And well, it's, it's, that was my question. You're going to be five or six years. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's going to work. You know, picking at it. Right. Plus, they're going to lose right. their their ditch time. No, I mean, no, no. I already done. Oh, higher than five. Oh, yeah. Well, I can't. can't. Or oh, do it in three years. Cut it back to three years. If you want? I mean. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Unless you have the money to do it, where's it going to come from? Uh, if, it's not, if it's not been spent, he hasn't been spent it. Then you right. got, whatever you're going to look into the, what you got oh, the money. But. No, but that's a that's a very similar to the other list of to dos for the highway liaisons right. to get into a little bit and say we even the even the five thousand needs to be contracted out. Never mind the twenty because we have. Right. We have a, if the board agrees that ditching and drainage are a priority, yeah. We shouldn't be doing sign work for no. a week or two. No, yeah. no, I don't. You know, then not to mention, I think there's, there isn't any disagreement right. about that. Yeah. We need to but we're hiring and ditching them, right? We to, right. Right. So we're we're and again, we just got to now and and well, I let's throw this in. Let's look at the budget and let's see what we can we can well, figure out how far to you know what we can get done. That's a good example of uh, Mark and I had a conversation today because the highway budgets generally in the Hyde Park anyway. If you go back in time. Not too far, because it gets weird 30 years ago, but for the last 20, 30 years, you have line items in the highway budget. You can go look at your town reports and it'll say gravel, it'll say winter salt, it'll say culverts, whatever. And you had a certain dollar amount, but no concept of work products or work uh, programming. So Mark's talking, and we're talking tonight about a programming question. How do you program a sign replacement and installation program? Do you have the highway guys set aside three or four weeks every summer, just like winter sand, and do signage and use town equipment, town labor, all that stuff, and come up with a cost to compare it to a contractor time, which generally is going to be a little more expensive because they have profit motive, and take up the highway crew's time with, with them doing it at what looks like a cheaper one, but then no ditching is being done on the other program that we also have a priority. So discussion with the liaison and Mark is sort of transitioning to that. We did the brush cutting. That's a brush cutting program now of $7,000 a year. We know how it's done. We know what it's going to take. We know where the equipment comes from. We know all that mm -hmm. stuff. And that is a program for multiple years that slugged you know, into a separate line item still, but set up to be determined ahead of time is that is one of the regular programming. What's not in there are the cost for a program because we still have labor and things scattered about other places. So whether you all make the decision to go to a programming budget, so the budget looks totally different, where you have your all your costs for brush cutting, the winter sand, uh, ditching, and, to, and labor and taxes and all that stuff broken out too. Yeah. And then you know what the cost that at least allows you to compare it to the contractor world when you make these decisions about oh we small road projects we have to double that because we're really finding more productivity with our whole crew contractor and town crew combined if we combine them and that we've sort of gone that way already we do have contractors that come in regular for paving for example that we don't do ourselves yeah and it's the same thing sign is the same thing 
just how do we do any more signs except for emergency, somebody takes a stop sign out and we need to get the stop sign back. But other than that, the sign program is done by Lafayette under some contract, you know, two miles of ditching need to be done every year by whoever has the contract for three years because that'll make it more interesting to a contractor. And they have to produce so many miles at the new, you know, uh, MRGP standard. Now, Garfield talking about speedman. Garfield's been half done, is, is that one the gravel, the gravel section. The gravel's been half done. Not the pig. But the sign is just there for speedman is. In Morristown, 35, not in Hyde Park. But the lady that was talking at town meeting. She's on the gra gravel section. But she wanted, there's no been no speed limit signs up there. <coughs> yeah, there. Yeah, but they ain't, they don't go all the way up. Mark said he finished the gravel section last year. Last year, and okay. she's come. She was thinking that Carfield Road was supposed to be done, which includes paved too. And we didn't touch the paved section. So uh, Ron? Yes. Where are we with the sign? What are we? How are we left that? Uh, they're the board's trying to think if you should deal with it. <laughs> I can deal with it. I'll have to write it for the next meeting. Okay, Brian's yeah. Brian's going to help you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's it. I, I he keeps on going. Yeah. He? <laughs> okay. All right. So well, I have an answer for the next meeting. Okay. Well, I have a suggestion. Right. Okay. Anything else? No, we're, just, we're just spending money. Uh, there was two requests from earlier in the meeting for the waiver of dog fees to yeah. May 1st, or dog late fee. Sorry. Yeah, late fees. And the waiver of fax fees. I think the only way to do with fax fees is just to allow the town clerk to keep the fees for faxing waived until she feels like right. they, they don't need to be waived anymore, whenever that happens. I don't, right. yeah. we don't, I don't think we need a straight date on that one, but I think the late penalties is more of a practice for people. I think there's more going on than just worried about dog feed right now. No, but these are all the things that the office has to deal with those. Right. Right. right, so Kim can make her own decision on it. Yeah. Well, the late fees are not my fees. Those are those are our fees. That's those are your fees, fees that you put in place that I implement. <laughs> right there. There's no, a no, I don't Roman, know. The, what I said was that it's better for dog fees in particular to have an end date for when you're going to give people a freebie for being late. So what do you think it should be? Based set? on the response from so many other towns doing the same thing, most towns are doing May 1st. Okay. I'll make the a motion to fees. make it yeah. to May 1st. Second. Yeah. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Roger, we're, you're we're, aye. We're, we're, uh, you just won a prize and we'll tell you what it is when you come to the office. We are, we are. You're new chairman now. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I'm going to North Carolina, come to where I'm water. I don't care. <laughs> The um, uh, we're just uh, at uh, at Kim's recommendation. We're waiving the because they come to the town. We have to waive them. We're the waiving late. the late fees for dog right. licenses until May first, which is what other towns are doing. Oh, okay. yeah, thank you. I don't think we're giving up too much money. No. <laughs> I don't think it's going to pay for the signs. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> and then the fax fees. And then, and then, uh, just to give Kim the authority to uh, waive the fax fees until she thinks it's appropriate to put so it moved. in. Second. Oh, uh, and now we're giving Kim the authority to waive the fax fees on on until she just thinks it's time to put them back in. Um, no. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Okay. I have yeah. two. A, Executive session request for a real estate transaction, personnel matter, and I think that's it. Okay. Well, Good night. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. Thank you.